My name is Caitlin Hart with East Idaho News, and today I am at the Advanced Test Reactor at Idaho National Laboratory. I am so excited. We have this awesome opportunity to go inside and learn about the reactor. This reactor helps with medical breakthroughs. It helps uh, the military, the Navy. It helps with energy safety, energy security, national security, all these super cool things. And I'm so excited to go inside and learn more. Let's get it started. Advanced Test Reactor is it's one of INL's flagship facilities. It's actually the world's most powerful test reactor. In 1952, Idaho National Laboratory built its very first test reactor, known as the Materials Testing Reactor, essentially marking the inception of test reactor technology. They knew very early on that they were going to need an experimental facility in order to bombard uh, experiments, whether it's fuels or materials, with very, very high levels of neutron flux. It allows scientists to observe changes in materials much quicker than any other kind of nuclear reactor. Delon de Bois Blanc. He is best known as the creator of the very unique core design for the advanced test reactor. As one of the first neutron physicists at INL, de Bois Blanc introduced the cloverleaf core concept to ATR. Not only did this design propel ATR to its status as the world's most powerful test reactor, but it also remains one of INL's flagship features today. But the story is that de Bois Blanc, on the way home from work one evening, kind of had a brainstorm and drew it out in the dust on his dashboard on his way home from the site one day. You know, the more he looked at this clover leaf shape, he realized that it would create you know, nine very valuable uh, test positions that we call flux traps. These traps make the process ideal for conducting a wide range of experiments. De Bois Blanc's ideas show how important creative reactor core designs are for advancing nuclear research. Even though ATR started up in 1967, it's still the flagship today. It's still the world's most powerful and most versatile test reactor. The history behind ATR is a fascinating time capsule of innovation, but how does it actually work? It is the most powerful test reactor in the world by about two times. For example, if you needed to test a material or fuel and you needed 10 years of data, normally it would take you 10 years. At ATR, you can get 10 years worth of data in just a year or less. It can test articles, fuel, materials, or whatever you are wanting to test in a nuclear reactor at a much accelerated rate as compared to just a normal reactor. It has the biggest spaces for testing, and you can even test different cooling methods in these spaces. Essentially, you can test experiments quickly and efficiently, making it a very unique and useful tool for nuclear research. If you get the chance to visit ATR, you will be one of a very small number of people who can say they've witnessed electrons moving faster than the speed of light in water. This phenomenon at ATR creates what is called the Cherenkov effect, turning the water near the reactor a glowing blue color. Put simply, Cherenkov radiation is visible radiation. Inside a reactor, a lot of energy is released in a really small area, and the water molecules energize so quickly that they travel faster than the speed of light in water. Eventually, the electrons have to slow down, and when they do, they give off light. And lucky to us, it's visible to the human eye in a bright blue hue. Even the most powerful test reactor in the world needs its own test reactor. Meet ATR Critical, or ATRC. ATRC acts as the test reactor for the test reactor, doing a low power version of the experiments that ideally end up in ATR. ATRC was actually built in the early 60s, um, went critical for the first time in 1964. With the original mission of supporting ATR's initial startup, we did all the physics testing and neutronics testing back in the early 60s. The results of our low power testing can help impose safety limits on reactor power for ATR. One fascinating aspect of ATRC is that much of its equipment is still the original from the 1960s, unlike ATR, which needs to regularly replace control elements and core components. Because ATRC operates at such low power, it doesn't face the same issues as ATR, allowing it to run for 60 years with the same control elements and core without needing replacements. Well, that was super cool. We learned so much. Um, thank you so much to everybody at INL and everybody at ATR for showing us around and all of the experts. Thank you so much to Joseph Campbell and Kevin Weaver and Alyssa Spence. You guys are so knowledgeable and know so much, and we were able to learn so much. Um, and thanks for watching.